Hello everyone, my name is Joe and welcome to another edition of Joe's Technology. Today we're looking at the installation of Linux on a bootable USB thumb drive. So here, let's go ahead and get started. From your favorite search engine, you can, uh, or you can go directly to it. Uh, see, I just have to type pen and the computer knows exactly where I'm going. Probably because uh, I've, I've gone there before, so Google remembers. It's pendrivelinux.com. And as you can see, it's the first thing that pops up. Now, Pendrive Linux has a couple of different uh, uh, programs, but the one that I personally prefer is the uh, Universal USB installer. The, the other one is fine, too. You, you can try either one. However, this tutorial is for the uh, Universal USB installer. Now, don't be sucked in by this, this big giant download here, latest version, cost-free. Sadly, this is an advertisement. Uh, I don't even know why they have this, so... That's just an ad trying to trick you into downloading something that you don't want. Uh, so here, I'll scroll down here. As you can see, we have all of our stuff. And this is an actual download button that goes to the program we really want, which is our download installer. So I'll just click that and say Save to File. Now, you'll notice that it comes in very quickly. In fact, the download is already completed because this is a very tiny program. Uh, let's see, what is our current file size? No, I forget. Ah, see, just over a megabyte. So this comes in pretty quick, depending on how fast your internet connection is. If you don't have broadband, you're not going to want to do this anyways, because uh, <laughs> this next step takes a little doing, and you'll see why. So here, we'll, we'll just uh, go back here, and I'll say, in this case, we're looking for a Linux Mint. Notice it, it offers Linux Mint 16, which is currently the most current version. Depending on where, when you're seeing this video, you can pick another version. But as you can see, that's what pops up first. So if I were to go here and say, sure, I would love to get Linux Mint. And as a matter of fact, I want 16. And in particular, I'm interested in the Cinnamon 64-bit edition. Now, if you're curious, the biggest difference between 32-bit and 64-bit uh, is the amount of memory that they are able to address. 32-bit operating systems are limited to less than 4 gigabytes of memory, whereas 64-bit operating systems will be able to address much, much more. And uh, uh, to be honest, I don't remember what the upper limit is, but it's currently more memory than we can physically put into a computer. So if you've got 4 gigabytes or more, go for the 64-bit. In many cases, you, you can install the 64-bit even if you have less memory. Uh, provided you have a processor that supports it. Again, you'll have to look in the box. If it says Intel 64 or AMD 64, that will indicate whether or not you'll be able to support it. If you have anything else, like uh, it says x86 compatible, for example, and it doesn't have you know Intel or AMD 64 anywhere on the box, go with 32-bit edition. Okay, so in my case, I'm, I'm doing 64-bit for my, uh, my demonstration. Let's see, I uh, am in the continental United States, so I'm going to go ahead and choose one of the USA mirrors. James Madison University, that usually works out good for me. So I'll just say save. Now this one will take a while. Here's the, the part that takes a bit. Notice that it says three hours. So depending on your internet connection and how busy everything is between you and that site, this is the part that takes a while. So let's go ahead and we'll fast forward. <laughs> So once we have the OS, uh, oh, whoops, now it's saying five hours. Well, hopefully it's not, not quite that long. And usually you set these things to download and go to sleep, and they're here in the morning. Okay, it took a little while, but here we are. Linux Mint 16, the Cinnamon Edition DVD 64-bit uh, has been downloaded. We picked this version because the DVD version comes with a bunch of drivers and codecs, that make it very easy to install on a new computer without having a hassle with, you know, playing the game of, you know, chase the driver. Uh, believe me, that's not fun for uh, someone who's new to Linux. It just adds to the frustration and makes them wonder, oh, should I go back to the torment of Windows? Because the torment seems easier by comparison. Well, that's just familiar. It's not easier. Trust me. <laughs> and the reason why I picked the Cinnamon Edition for our test is that, uh, for one thing, it's probably going to be the most popular version of Linux Mint. Uh, the Cinnamon desktop feels the most familiar, especially for people who are coming to Linux for the first time from another environment, such as uh, Windows or Macintosh. Um, in fact, heck, it looks more like Windows than Windows 8 does. Uh, you'll see why in just a moment. So we have our universal USB installer. We can just click on it. Now, you can't see this part, but it's asking me 
for my admin password because uh, I'm not running as an admin account. That's a, a good security precaution within Windows is you do your day-to-day -day business and with one account that's just a user and you have another admin account which only is used for installing software. Since this account, or I mean this uh, uh, installation program uses admin features, it challenges you for those administrative credentials. So be prepared. Uh, you, you can only run this uh, if you have admin access to the computer you're running it on. Okay, so it has a little license agreement, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> Basically what it boils down to is this software is free. You know, you're using it knowing that we're not promising you anything. We hope it works for you. Good luck. If it does something bad, it's your fault for using it anyways. Um, that, that's the gist of what all that legalese means. Uh, you're not actually installing anything to the computer. It just comes up because uh, the people who wrote this need to protect themselves, and I understand. Okay, so now we just tell the computer what version of Linux Mint we want to create a bootable USB for. Now, since Linux Mint is very popular, it's right up at the top. As you can see here, now it says, well, show me where I can find the file. I know that it's going to be Linux Mint, and this asterisk is a wildcard. That means uh, whatever the rest of the stuff is, it will start with Linux Mint and end in ISO, indicating that it's a special disk image uh, for making disks. So sure enough, it starts with Linux Mint. That way, if you had a whole bunch of files on the drive, uh, that little thing will filter it out and only show you the ones that start with that uh, nomenclature. All right, and so now we uh, select our USB drive. In this case, I've, I've put on a little pen drive, and it's ready to go. Notice that it only offered me the option for the pen drive. If you click this, you can see all the drives. This is dangerous. You pick the wrong one, this thing's going to wipe it, and once it's gone, it's gone. So never check that. I don't even know why that's there. Uh, probably just in case it auto-detected the wrong drive, but uh, I've never seen it do it, so... Oh, and here we'll say Format E, so it'll go ahead and wipe it. As you can see, it indicates that it's going to put FAT32. If you want, you can even set a persistent file size for storing changes. I'm just going to leave it at the default. This is only used for installation. I'm not creating a drive to have a portable workstation that I take around with me, but you could. You could create a USB disk whose primary purpose is to basically allow you to turn any computer into a Linux workstation wherever you go and save your changes. Okay, now this takes a minute. First it will, uh, well actually I think it already formatted the, uh, <laughs> the thumb drive, that only took a moment. And now we extract all the information and then put it onto the thumb drive. Now this takes anywhere from uh, 5 to 15 minutes depending on the speed of your computer. Uh, in my case, I'm using an, an i5, one of the middle uh, ones. <clears throat> so it eh, probably take about 10 minutes. Um, then I'll have my bootable drive. So let's go ahead and we'll fast forward to the end. Okay, now just for fun, I went ahead and threw up my Windows Task Manager to look at the processes and see what the computer's doing. I forgot. What was I thinking? <clears throat> the CPU is not the bottleneck. In this case, it's going to be the, the Universal Serial Bus because we won't be able to finish the process until the bus can physically transfer all the data that we expect to the uh, USB uh, stick. So that, that's actually the real bottleneck. Uh, whether you use USB 2.0, 3.0, you know, that's going to affect how quickly this executes. As you can see, the, the uh, CPU is barely breaking a sweat um, I'm doing this. It doesn't take up hardly any memory, and it definitely doesn't take up very much CPU processing power. Uh, so it'll just take a little while. We'll extract the files and then finish installing them. Okay, so now it's time to fire the computer up and try out our new bootable USB stick. Now the first thing is to uh, go into the basic input-output system, the BIOS, tell the computer this is what we want to do. Now your computer may be different, but on mine, when you have the computer boot, you tap the delete key and that brings up the uh, BIOS screen. In my case I'm using the Gigabyte UEFI Dual BIOS. So I can simply go over here and uh, I have a boot override that allows me to uh, choose one of the uh, USB sticks that's plugged into the computer. And as you can see it's a Centen uh, Data Stick Pro. Uh, yours may say something else. So. You just pick whichever is appropriate. Uh, yours may say boot from USB as an option, or 
may list all the devices. Every BIOS is different, unfortunately. There is no standard for this. Uh, <laughs> manufacturers make up their own. So, by telling it that I want to boot off of the USB stick that I just created, now this is Linux Mint 16. And it'll take a moment to fire up, and then I'll be able to install everything. Okay, now that we have our bootable USB stick created, and we've told our BIOS that we would like to go ahead and boot off of that bootable USB stick, we can now fire up Linux Mint 16. Notice how quick that was. From sticking the disk in there, or, well, <clears throat> I should disk, what am I saying? Uh, USB stick. There are so many kinds of media that uh, it's getting to be irrelevant what form it takes. It's just media. Um, <laughs> disk, stick, uh, flash drive. Uh, we'll see what, it, what comes next. Well, anyways, uh, Linux Mint 16 is now loaded. And in fact, we have a full desktop. We've even got our default applications that come with it. You could start using it just like this. So if, uh, oh, and matter of fact, here I'm connected to the internet. So here, I'll, I'll fire up Firefox. And because this is Linux Mint 16, of course, it defaults to a uh, Linux Mint uh, website. And uh, I think they have a little agreement with Google to uh, get a little bit of search traffic. So uh, it uh, fires up and, and we find ourselves ready to do uh, Google searches uh, funneled there by Linux Mint. So I'm hoping that the, uh, the Mint people get uh, plenty of money out of that. Installing Linux Mint is as easy as simply clicking on the uh, Install Mint icon. And uh, I'll go ahead and go with the uh, default language, which is English, since I'm uh, in the continental United States. And uh, let's see. Oh, by the way, you may notice here I'm clicking and dragging here. Notice it turns into a hand as I left click. That's because there's a little quirk with my particular video card. Uh, I found this out the hard way. Uh, on the first uh, take that I, I tried of this, I was wondering, I was like, why isn't it updating? Uh, it turns out there's a little problem with the screen refresh. In case this happens to you, you can force the window to refresh by clicking it and shaking it around. So I want to say erase the disk. There are many other options, uh, and, and you'll see different ones based on what you have. If you had Windows on this machine, it would offer to install itself side by side or some other operating system. In, in my case, in order to be uncomplicated and to avoid problems, I'm just putting Mint on this computer all by itself. That way there's no problems with conflicts, overwriting each other's master boot records, and causing other problems. Okay, and I'll go ahead and I'll leave the default time zone, which in this case is the central time zone. Again, English United States for my keyboard layout is fine by me. Here, I'll just put Joe. Uh, again, the screen's not refreshing, so I gotta shake it a little in order to see what I'm doing. Shake it to make sure I've got the cursor in the right place. This is just a little quirk of this version. Um, and it has to do entirely with the video card that I have selected. Let's see. Click. Oh, password does not match. Whoops. This is the exciting part, is having to type passwords without being able to see the cursor. There we go. All right, so I have a strong password, and this check mark indicates that they match. And it will require my password at login, so my Mint computer will not just sit there open uh, and ready for anybody to use. Here, I'll just shake this a little bit. Okay, so now Mint is beginning to copy the files. It's going to uh, set up the hard drive with the partitions that it feels are appropriate for Mint. As you can see, I don't really have to do much. I just click and say that I want it and say go. Uh, and, and like I said, hopefully you'll uh, end up with a video card that doesn't have the little quirk. But in case you do, where it looks like it's not doing anything, just click, see the little hand, grab it, and shake it. And that way you can see whether Mint's actually doing anything. <laughs> uh, hey, what the heck, it's free, right? Oh, by the way, I'll go ahead and I'll fast forward since this installation process takes in another 10 or 15 minutes. Um, oh, well, here, it might go quick. We'll see. Oh, whoops. I guess that was pretty quick. Uh, I, I hate to admit it, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I wanted to catch the end of the installation. Oh, well. On my computer, the installation process took about mm, five minutes. So, that's pretty good. Boy, I'd try that with Windows. So, I'll just go ahead and hit restart, and I'll be able to uh, boot the computer for the very first time with its new OS.
ta-da. And when we see the uh, Mint logo coming to life, we know it's time to uh, run Linux Mint. Oh, well, I guess maybe I should have been more creative in my name, but since this is the account that I entered, this uh, is my default administrator account. So if I wanted to create user accounts, I could. And it's the first time that Mint's fired up, so it's probably still setting things up here. Although it's done a pretty good job of detecting all the hardware so far. Oh, good grief. I need to get a better video driver so I don't have that update problem. Okay, well, Mint uh, has our customary welcome screen. It gives you a little bit of information, tutorials, chat rooms. And in my case, I don't use it, so I'll just go ahead and say close. <clears throat> but other than that, I have a fully working Linux Mint uh, 16 installation. Oh, by the way... Step one, ladies and gentlemen, uh, run your updates. <laughs> this is probably the most important part. So, uh, whoops, uh-oh, incorrect password. Whenever you perform an administrative function in Linux, you'll be challenged for your admin credentials, so don't be surprised. It's a very good security feature and ensures that applications don't automatically run with admin rights and do terrible things without your knowledge, uh, like in Windows, for example. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to stay off my Windows tirade. Oh, uh, depending on your geography of the world, you may want to change the update sources um, to uh, be able to get your updates uh, in the fastest amount of time from uh, places that are available. Oh, as you can see, I have one mint update pack. Uh, so that's pretty easy. I'll simply click Install All Updates. And uh, so anytime my little shield here has an exclamation point, then that means that there's uh, new things to install. Okay, so we have Linux Mint installed. Oh, by the way, um, if you want to install additional programs, and there's lots and lots of free ones, that's the really nice benefit of uh, a Linux environment. I mean, there are some things that you buy, and uh, it's commensurate with the quality of work that's gone into them, but there's lots of little free things. Small, simple programs. A lot of people have shared them. Uh, let's see, here we go. Software Manager. Ah, again, I'm challenged for my credentials. Uh, whoops. I had to put in the right password. So there's all kinds of free stuff available from the software manager. You can just click on whatever you want and, and download all kinds of great stuff. Uh, by the way, uh, if you have children in your household and you want to get them on the Linux bandwagon, this is the, the easiest way to do it. Notice how many free packages. <laughs> and some of them are very good, too. All right, enjoy. That's been the how to install. Uh, well, make your own bootable USB uh, Linux Mint 16 <laughs> uh, thumb drive and uh, how to install the operating system.